This week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. The guy holding the street sign on the corner telling people you're going to hell forever is changing no minds. Or if he does, like, how long does that last? The one thing I did think is everybody that's actually there for the opening ceremonies, they're not even seeing this. This was made for TV. It doesn't bother me. I don't feel like it's my job to defend Christianity. I think God does a great job defending himself. Free will is clear cut. That doesn't exist. Are, are you, you more likely- serious? Where were you born? If you were born in communist China, are you more likely to be stuck in communist Communist China, then become Jeff Pearson of today. You have the free will to be fired. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is Jeff. It's episode 243. Andy, how are you? If I'm lucky, am I not a Christian anymore? Oh, Zach? Joe Biden has the first case of Grovid 19. And Jeff? Jeff. Harris 2024, baby! <laughs> I got to give credit where credit's due. Um, <laughs> Wait, really? I was listening to Michael Malice, the national treasure that is Michael Malice, maybe the preeminent anarchist alive today. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, he was on Rogan, and they were talking about the videos of Joe Biden that look like he's taller now. Oh, yeah. People are speculating body double, yeah. which every president has had a body double. This is not conspiracy stuff. But whether this is a body double or not, we don't know yet, but he does look taller, and he said he he got grovid, <laughs> 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 which I loved. So credit where credit's due. All right. Also, the worst Sesame Street puppet ever. <laughs> grovid. <laughs> uh, hey, listener and viewers, welcome to Bros Bibles and Beer. We are a podcast where we have serious conversations about faith and culture. Without taking ourselves too seriously, I am Andy McCraw, Joan Boy hosts Zach Crater and Jeff Pearson, and I forgot how to talk. And Grovid. <laughs> <laughs> I think I uh, uh, <clears throat> came down with Grovid. And our producer. Dave Ritchie in the house. Producer Dave, um, <sighs> thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. Back on the ones and zeros. Yeah, not fired yet. Yet. Yeah. I'll work on that. <laughs> I yeah. brought you in late as the closer, so thank you for being here. Anytime. <laughs> so shout out to a few new subscribers on YouTube. We got Andrew Calvert, Eric Gomez, Davis, uh, Jay Nope, and Ellie May. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, thanks, new subscribers. Um, thanks, you Alvin. When we said like and subscribe, and if you're tuning in for the first time and you like what you see, obviously hit the like and subscribe buttons, but if what you uh, what you listen to, you enjoy. Please uh, share this with one other person this week. Hit that share button and send it to one other person that you think might also enjoy this. And uh, because that helps the podcast grow, and it'll eventually help us quit our day jobs so that we can do this full time and annoy you twenty four seven. Eh, twenty four, maybe six. Twenty four. Got to leave four. room for the Sabbath. Yeah. Okay. The Olympics are going right now. Have you guys watched the Olympics? I have been. I'm a. I are you I, an avid watcher I'm this a, week? I'm a junkie. I discovered handball this season. Super. But, but have you been watching boring. the Olympics? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I've discovered Olympic handball this season. <laughs> we, we're watching handball and uh, field shooting. hockey. Yeah, well, no, forget that. And my wife and I, we go about thirty seconds. We're like, can we change this? Yeah, okay, we're in agreement. Okay, let's let's change this. This is very boring. Also, I didn't know three on three half court basketball was an Olympic event, which it is. What? And when you're watching it, you're like, why am I watching this? Yeah. It is a little bit like, oh, we're just throwing everything in there. I'm glad surfing's there. I've That's been fun. watching skateboarding and basketball. It, skateboarding and basketball. So my wife tried to get me to find the 11 year old Chinese girl who's skateboarding. I've heard about her, but couldn't find her. I don't think it starts until next, this coming week. So, but there's watching. an 11 year old. Oh yeah. All the skateboarder, all the, the lady, I was going to say women, but no, there's like two 19 year olds. Everyone else is 14 or 13. All right. 11. It's okay. Trivia. Who's the, how old is the oldest person in the Olympics this year? LeBron James, 39. No, not even close. Oh, that was a great guess. Not even close. He is the oldest uh, Team USA basketball that player. That wasn't the question. Okay, Andy, you're right about that. Okay, what's the right answer? 62. Oh, and the event is... Gym we... teaching. Gym teaching. Do you have a guess, Dave? 
I'm going to say something with equestrian. Horse riding. No, it's the hundred yard dash. Yeah, it is not the hundred yard dash. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I just this was a rundown. Someone told me eleven eleven years younger, sixty two old, sixty two older. That's it. But he definitely is in the Olympics. This is the worst trivia. We're gonna edit that ever. out. We're gonna edit that out. Dave, can you find that for us? Come on. Sixty two. You have a phone old. that functions. Oh my god. Producer Dave, find it. Sixty two year old right. Olympian. But speaking of the Olympics, I did discover rugby. And I don't mind it. I'm learning the rules. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't know the rules. I didn't know the ball has to, once you go past the line, the ball has to touch the ground. Yeah. So everyone dives or slides and touches the ground. But for all, we're going to talk about the Olympics and the opening ceremony and why it's the world is going to hell in a handbasket or not. Um, and then just see where that takes us. I don't even know what you're talking and about. And we're going to get to... Well, Such a wholesome family. Just wait for it. Thing okay, hell get, in a handball. Get to listener feedback and all that stuff. Okay. But the Olympics, the events themselves, it's still a let the best person win. And yes, while teams may cheat, there might be doping. People are trying to get of get away with. It's still like, hey, are you the best on your team, individual or team related? Who's gonna win? And Something about that sport, the great equalizer of who's putting in the hard work, who's a little bit lucky with their genetics, but also the hard work pays off. It's the spirit of the Olympics. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So I'm going to, the way, the way Instagram works, it's tough to control things. So I have my finger pausing it, which is why I'm leaned over. So Dave, you can fire up the picture in picture. Yeah. And this is the U.S. women's rugby team. Oh. Nope, that's not the right one. Take the picture and picture off right now. <laughs> I hate you, Instagram, and I want to kill you. That was just a fun girl running down the street with the ball. <laughs> okay, right. here we go. All right, pull it up. Oh, nice. Dude, was this... Oh, Game oh! of Thrones! Oh, Game of Thrones! Oh, in the... oh dude, that was a... Oh! This is so good. Oh. She gets up. Oh! oh! She's carry you. <laughs> she's carrying her baby. And she yes. scores. In the face, in the throat. Oh, I love that. Dude. Oh, dude. Oh, yes. <laughs> dude, that is Game of Thrones. Kill it. What was that I blonde from? I was going to continue, though. Right, it is. <laughs> what was wow. that blonde from Game of Thrones? Because that was her on the dragon. <laughs> Just knocking people I don't know. Out. I don't know their names. I was, was not familiar with anybody on any rugby team in the entire universe, but I saw that moment. Actually, I was watching the game when that happened. That was the U.S.? Yeah. Dude. And they dominated that that game. That girl's a wrecking Vicious. ball. Vicious. <sighs> and if you, you know, get on YouTube to to watch that if you're just listening to us. You should just search for a wrecking ball lady. <laughs> <laughs> that look, though, there, there's like... There's possession there. Oh, I love that. Possessed by the spirit of victory. Just they say it's nine tenths of the law. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, She's got serious compet. She has serious competitor in her eyes, and also a father who's like, "You better make up for the fact that I didn't have a son. So do it oh my right gosh, now, gosh, man." Uh, you might be right. I'm not sure, but sometimes that happens with. I, I always athletes. ask the question. Yeah. What led them to be this type of a female? It's not always good. You're always asking that question, Jeff. <laughs> like every day. Every day. <laughs> I, I do. I do. All right. <laughs> Why are you the way you are? Why are you that way? <laughs> Michael Scott. <laughs> Why are you the way? Why are you the way that you are? Okay, so kerfuffle on Fifth Street. Paris, France. Let's use full sentences. What do you so guys know huge, about this? There was a huge uproar in the opening ceremonies for the Paris Olympics. Um, there was some extracurriculars that happened uh, above and beyond that were in the name of creativity and artistry. Thank uh, you, Thomas Jolly. Seemed to piss off about, uh, you know, two billion people in the world. And what's, what we're talking about specifically is what some are deeming a sacri- sacrilegious reenactment of the Last Supper 
with Christ swapped out for Dionysus and a bunch of uh, with his balls hanging out. But no, I'm, I'm laughing because you said sacrilegious, and I did have the tentative title sanctified or sac religious because with ball sack. One of the individuals in this last, well, some people say it's Last Supper, and some people say it's the Feast of the Gods, uh, featuring Dionysus. That uh, wasn't their own description, though. Well, it's changed. It's gone back and forth. But regardless, one of the individuals, if you look closely, it looks like one of one of their brains is out <laughs> below their short <laughs> shorts. And I couldn't tell Wait, if, if... When you say brains, what are you alluding to? Single ball. Single ball tasteful. Okay. Not both. You got to keep it tasteful. Tasteful just single one, ball. Just one at a time. Thousand points of light. <laughs> But I don't. I can't confirm or deny because you have to zoom in, and it does look like there are extra shapes there, and it it does look flesh colored. I don't know if he's wearing leggings, but either way, there's a ball out, which is something. I'm imagining you just like doing this on your phone, like, oh my god, oh my god, that, I think that is that is one ball. I'm like, hey Siri, zoom and enhance. <laughs> it's like Minority Report. <laughs> All right. Oh, you're talking to your stupid phone. Thank you. The yeah, so the <laughs> he went uh, balls to the wall. <clears throat> Thank you. And th- and that's not even what people are pissed about. No. They think it looks like the last supper. Um the Olympic committee did apologize sort of. They're like if you're offended, we're sorry. Um apparently it against their bylaws, the actual rules I read to include religious stuff of any nature because they don't want to get in this business of offending people. Um, oh, that's but, BS. I no, that's BS actually there. a rule that well, I realize they, that. they vol- violated. Um, but whether it is the actual Last Supper or the Feast of the Gods featuring Dionysus, which isn't the actual name, it's just the one I'm using because I can't remember it. Um, it I is do, Dionysus. I do have a... Don't don't pull it up yet, so I can get to it. Oh, we're doing that. Oh again. man! Sorry, this is a well-oiled the powerful machine. Powerful rugby player. We're doing this. So I do have a Bible scholar that did the appropriate things, and while I look it up, you guys can. Uh, he did appropriate things. Yeah, he debunked. Okay. He pointed out good reasons why it's not the Last Supper, and why you should just dial back your tone, Christians. Don't be so offended. And um, I'm gonna get to the stuff, guys. Keep... While you're doing so that, so many people are doing that, this. though. The I think the problem was that by their own admission, I thought that they had stated that's what this was. The creators themselves. They did before they walked that back. Yeah, which means you got caught and didn't, for some reason, didn't realize the backlash that you would get, or they didn't know. Like, what didn't if know what the people that commented didn't know it wasn't supposed because it. I can see why you would compare it to the Last Supper scene. This is Da Vinci's Last Supper, correct? Wait, wait, I'm confused. What do you mean? Who's the they didn't know? Whoever commented didn't know. They were just reacting and not... No, no, no. The people who created it. I, my understanding is that their original, that they claimed, yes, this was a recreation of the Last Supper. Uh, well, this is the nature of this story. Because I read the actual guy said... No, that that was not my inspiration. So Thomas Jolly, somebody from the, the Olympics. Pers- no, Thomas Jolly was the choreographer of this four-hour opening ceremony, and he said, "Yes, it was not. That's not what it was intended to be." Somebody from the Olympics uh, basically said, "Yeah, it was related to that." The and IOC, they apologized. Right? Yeah, yeah. So they were on different pages. But the actual choreographer said it was not related to the Last Supper. It went from the Last Supper to a run, a uh, oh, it, this at is just what, a French runway of, of at what point, nice clothing. Yeah, at what point did he? I mean, one can surmise if you're trying to get that close to where no one can really tell, then does it matter if you were trying or not? Well, you obviously had a centerpiece, the thing which I, was a very large woman with like a almost a, a halo over her head which is but that's also okay so we'll let me play this clip play because clip. It, this might answer some of the questions and it also might create more um yeah because i'm angry right now 
the Olympics just create a parody of Jesus' Last Supper with drag queens? All right, let's see it. Well, that is the question being asked after last night's Olympic ceremony took place. And you already answered your own question by showing that clip with that blue figure in front of the table. Who on earth do they represent in the painting The Last Supper? Nobody. That's Dionysus. Even the actor who portrayed that character said, this is Dionysus. Even the Olympics said, this is Dionysus. This is an allusion to a painting that is housed in a church in France called the Feast of the Gods, which depicts Dionysus feasting in front of a table where there's a wedding feast going on, where Apollo is featured at the center of the table with a halo behind his head. Yeah, you can see that. The Olympics version has the person seated in the middle wearing a seven-pointed halo. That originates in Greek iconography that was borrowed into Christianity. That is associated with Apollo, with Helios, with Dionysus, with other deities that represent the sun or are merged with it. It has nothing to do with the Last Supper. In a couple of the acts, some were claiming that religious imagery was used, like the golden calf. That is not the golden calf. That is a statue called Bull and Deer. It was created by Paul Juve in 1937 for a contest in France. It has been housed at the Trocadero for many decades, and that temporary stage was built in the Trocadero around the statues that are there. It has absolutely nothing to do with worship or with the golden calf. The fourth horseman. See my video number McClellan 2175 for why it is monumentally stupid to think that horse represents any of the horsemen of the apocalypse. And one scene in particular is being compared to Leonardo da Vinci's mural of Jesus and his 12 disciples. In the scene, broadcast cameras pan out on a number of drag queens standing behind a raised stage, with one in the middle wearing a piece on her head that is likened to religious drawings of a halo with lines of light emanating out of it. Some outraged with this scene said this is extremely disrespectful to Christians, and that the Olympics declared loudly that the 2.4 billion Christians on Earth are not welcome. So the only thing being disrespected here is a competent grasp of culture because this outrage, whether it's real or feigned, is phenomenally hypocritical and misplaced because this isn't about the Last Supper. But even if it were, there's nothing wrong with using imagery from a famous piece of art to offer some social commentary. As Jesus would have eaten with drag queens, they're allowed to say, hey, we have a seat at this table as well. And there would have been the same hypocrites out He's front stretching. gnashing their teeth at them the whole time too. And even if it is intended to be a critique or, heaven forbid, mockery, you don't get to spend so much time and effort trying to convince the world that everybody's part of a Christian culture, that Western civilization yeah, was built by Christianity, that is the foundation you could probably of kill our it. art and architecture and literature and law you have to kill it. and everything, and then turn around and try to... <clears throat> yeah, I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit taken back the fact that he then went on to push in as if it was a depiction of the Last Supper. Um, if it's not, then just leave it as is. But he had to stick his nose in there. And well, I think he's just trying to say, hey, even if it was, based on your logic, you could still dial it back. But so when you take that picture, there's that one picture that people are doing the above and below where they're taking Da Vinci's. It is Da Vinci, right? Sure. The last. <laughs> just burp agree with me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, burp affirmative. The Last Supper painting, which it wasn't the actual Last Supper. It's his representation. The Last Supper did not look Wait, anything like that. Wait, you mean that? that uh, the actual Vinci, paint. You mean Da Vinci wasn't there? You no, know, he wasn't there. Per person? It's not the actual Last Supper. Those aren't the actual people. Um, but when you t do it side by side, and you have the picture above it, which is the Olympic one, it's cutting out all the other people there. And it's just cutting it so there's 12 people there. So like, see, 12, 12 people, 12 disciples, plus the Jesus figure in the middle. Um, but so that part of it is like, I, I lean towards it. It's the Feast of Dionysus or whatever. But regardless, just by the four of us, and and beyond, don't don't say the answer you think the world wants to hear or you think the church wants to hear. On a scale of one to ten, 
when you found out about this kerfuffle, these shenanigans, how offended are you? One being, I don't care, and 10 being, this means that the world wants to kill all the Christians. Should we do a one, two, three, and then say, say our number? <clears throat> so we're not influenced by others' answers? I already have my answer. Or we should, so, I should have got pencils so we go write ahead, it down. Andy. Uh, yeah. okay. Go ahead, Andy. One, two, three. Two, one. Two. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> so two, like two, you, two, two, one. I didn't care. You said seven. seven. Yeah, but hey, I, I stand just, behind your answer. Jeff. I, I didn't. No, I I saw it live. I saw it happening. I'm like, what are they doing? First of all, this is just a continuation of what's happened in the United States and all the, just the BS. So I'm like, of course this is happening. Like the whole world and the 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 they that be that are they've got the money and the power and the media like good for them way to go guys you you did it again you showed a bunch of really wacky nonconforming out of this world people that the civil society is like yep these people are fools and idiots so have fun with your clown show. And that's kind of what I thought. Doesn't really impact me. So seven is you're you're not I personally could, offended. I could care less. But the seven was more like and on yeah on top. Yeah, Jeff just, just likes numbers. It's yeah. just a joke. I could really doesn't matter. It's it was painful for him to say seven and not ten out of ten because it's trivial. It's, Jeff is always it's like trivial. Ten out of ten. <laughs> okay. I mean, so you're not a seven. Ultimately, I thought the one thing I did think is. Everybody that's actually there for the opening ceremonies and watching this, they're not even seeing this. This was made for TV because nobody that's in the stands, the thousands, tens of thousands of people is yeah. seeing this down the river. They're seeing the teams. They're seeing the dancing off to What's the side. What's the significance of that? It's driving home uh, a message. But that's that's true about every opening ceremony. It's, it's more, I mean, you're watching on TV. Like, yeah, but they wouldn't be allowed that that creativity and flexibility in a stadium. You just don't get that. Um, in Go back to China, even uh, you know back in 1984 in LA, and everywhere in between, you didn't get that. It was just like, oh, the, they came out, there was some bands, there was also some creativity and like dancing and, and gymnastics and things that were happening, especially like China was out of this world. Do you um, think that has more to do with the location or just the time? Like the year. <clears throat> what do you mean? Well, I, I, I think they, you mentioned LA in the 80s. I think the bigger reason that wouldn't have happened in LA in the 80s is because it was the 80s, not because it was LA. Okay, well, I, LA. I don't think that would have happened in <laughs> LA. So LA will host in 28. I don't think you're going to see that. They're going to be coming into a stadium. There's going to be a show. It's going to be pyrotechnics and I guess it's going to be fun. My point is that like, I I think it's probably more symptomatic of the culture of the time allowing something like this to to happen. For sure your point about like less likely that this would happen in China, for sure. Yes. Oh. <laughs> like they're not that, that, that's not going to slide and and the culture won't allow that and French culture is definitely more flexible there. But uh but I wouldn't put it past LA thinking about uh letting something in this ballpark fly. Maybe they wouldn't go Dionysus style, but they'd... I, I do not... I wouldn't be shocked. I do not think... I mean, all, I can only... Okay, so taking, like, the the gods to go back to the Olympiad, like, in Roman times, I see the history, but why put the crazy, like, sh like runway show... Drag queens. I'm like, wh what, what is that? That it could have been... It could have been normal, but it wasn't normal. It was up to the eleventh, you know. It is one. interesting that no, like lots of people got to sign off for something like this to be, you know, to be broadcast all over the world. You've got to get so many people have to be like, yes, I saw the whole thing. Green light, go, and for all of them to be like, oh, there's not a chance that this could be misinterpreted. Right. Or that this is pushing it a little too far. I'm guessing the they leaned into the provocation 
piggybacking on Jeff, like the gods thing, the Olympus, the Greek stuff. I don't mind that at all. And it, I don't even mind, like, I wouldn't have chosen to do like all drag queens if I was writing that thing. And I could just, just like two or three. Yeah, maybe, yeah, 33%. You just like to sprinkle them in. But uh, I just see it's it's provocative. Um, it's provocative for the sake of being provocative, and that's the part that bums me out, or is, not bums me out, but annoys me. Because right. Because it, uh, the Feast of Dionysus doesn't have anything to do with the Olympics. No. It's not. It's not. Tri- right. Like, it's the only connection is that it is part of Greek mythology. That's it. Which is connected to the Olympics, which is Tan- tangentially, yeah, yeah. Mount, Mount Olympus. Like this is the this is the end of the DEI. Like this is the last stand because this is in France. Macron, the president of France, pretty much just lost his government because the right of French government, the conservative side, is like enough of this, and he thought he had majority, and they're in Fran- they're in France, so there's like this like. Hey, we're the you know, sexual kind of revolution country, and we're like pushing the envelope. And it's like, yeah, a very small portion. And so he does a what is it called a snap vote, and he finds out, you know what? Most of your country is against you, and this is happening worldwide. It just happens that they're having the Olympics in France, and so not only three weeks ago has you know their government turned into. Uh, what's it called like where you have a lame duck they're a lame duck government they're the second most powerful country next to germany in the eu and they're finding out you know what the your country doesn't want any of this and what just happened in the olympics they don't want this nobody wants this gay lesbian they don't want to see this they don't want to be like this is like we're a bunch of crazy outlandish people making a bunch of publicity like let us be and live our lives so just just not to piss off youtube commenters we do have a gay lesbian in the room that can just validate this uh dave what do you (laughs) what do you think about can you verify since so he's not speaking on behalf of all gay lesbians he's not i found it uh provocative yeah okay thank you thank you for that have you guys ever had a macron like a chocolate macron man (laughs) They're delicious. <laughs> Never? <laughs> Negative. Talking about macrons? Or macaroons. Those, I have had one of those. Things. Are, are they? Different. Macrons and macaroons are different things. You say macron, I say macaroon, you say macrons. I say yeah. macra. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a macron. The macrons, you have some, you get a, a bitter, bitter Can taste. I get a tall drink of macra? <laughs> um, well... So I was I don't think any of us were offended. The the thought came to mind I don't feel like I need to defend Christianity in this moment. No. Someone can criticize it, let's 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 take a let's take the idea that it was for sure uh a mockery of Christianity. Okay. That's all right. Jesus doesn't need me to defend him. Mm-hmm. Uh Christianity doesn't need me to defend Christianity. I don't think that there's anybody out there who would see that and all of a sudden go, you know, I had clear positive feelings about Christianity before, and now I'm just not so sure. This has changed my mind about everything with Christianity. And right. I was going to believe, and now I don't believe. And no, I think I think everybody, if if they want to see it through that light, I, I guess I am sort of surprised. This is one example, but those in general who get really up in arms about um, people who want to criticize and and mock Christianity. Um, again, it it doesn't bother me. I don't feel like it's my job to defend Christianity. I think God is does a great job defending Himself. No, Andy, I, I agree with you, and I, I kind of liken this um, presentation to the BML, BLMers and the Free Free Palestine people. Who it's all orchestrated and. I'm like, I hope you guys had fun. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it's it's tr- it's trivial in the big picture. Um, I think it'll be forgotten in like oh, yeah. a couple of weeks. You know what's wild is is that I was looking for a, a tweet by Brian Zond responding to Elon Musk that I'll I'll pull up eventually, which is a great tweet of like 
let's keep perspective Christians. But it, what's crazy is we just we recorded sort of a response to the Trump assassination and stuff. Yeah, you know, a little over a week after the event, and then it came out a few days after that. But that's like almost forgotten, which is wild. Like you just said, it this will be forgotten. Yeah, it's like a a former president almost got killed and almost like that's old news which just speaks to the ridiculousness of the current timeline we're on it speaks to the marketing of media like they're very good at getting people or just getting the topic and the conversations changed as fast as they can if they need to and i mean it's literal programming they're good at it so i found the tweet um Elon Musk tweeted, unless there's more bravery to stand up for what is fair and right, Christianity will perish. And Brian Zahn said, hello, Elon. I've given my whole life to the cause of Christ. I'm fully invested. Christianity is not founded on bravery to stand up for what is fair and right, but on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christianity survived Nero and Diocletian. It'll survive the culture wars too. And I think Elon was... Elon, I think, was responding and pushing back against some of the Olympic-related kerfuffle. Yeah. I'm going to stop using that word. Yeah, um, no one uses that word. Was it 1930s? Yeah. Well, I'm an old soul, Andy, and you know, I just want to keep it fresh. Old-ass soul. Keep that old-ass soul fresh. <laughs> yeah, get get with the times. It's fuff. Like I called you an old asshole. <laughs> just, it's, it's fuff. You did. Fuff like sus. It's fuff. But I'm, I'm just curious. Like, So the Chinese Olympics... The opening ceremony... 100% it, less testicles shown in the Chinese Olympics. I cannot verify that, but I'm going to guess that's true. That yeah. was 2020, right? Yeah, the last Look one. Look it up, Dave. <laughs> so, they, <laughs> so they created a pandemic. No, no, hold on, hold on. And then they Jeff, held the hold Olympics. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on, Jeff. Um, their opening ceremony is elegant. I, I don't remember anything controversial. But I guarantee you they used elements... They were Chinese. They used elements from their culture, including their religious um, stu stuff. Is seems like the wrong word, but I think you know the thing where it's... They don't have a religion. There's well, no state religion. That's not the point, though. They they used... Like, there was elements of, of uh, Buddhism and incorporated within their art and the dancing, you would see cultural icons from their past that are not Christian. And that is, that is seen as more acceptable. Do, 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 if this do, is do, not, do. all right, Jeff, th this is not th the one that just happened. Assuming it's Dionysus and it's Greek related and it's controversial because of the, the drag queens and whatnot, but it's not a direct jab at Christianity. According to this little argument right. I'm making, What's the difference between like the Greek God showcase? It's the difference between drag queens and dragons. <laughs> hey, <-o! laughs> you're proud I, of yourself. I agree. I completely agree. Unless the dragon, I don't know. I just started to talk and I didn't have anything to follow it up. The guy was dragging his balls. No, there's, there's <laughs> no, just one. I said it's tasteful. <laughs> Two is over the top, right, yeah. Dave? In in yes. the Chinese culture, does the dragon come from like the year of the dragon type? I mean, that's a the dragon is a big deal in no, the I know, culture. I know, but the Christians weren't freaking out about seeing other religion and other religiouses certainly religion religiouses uh depicted. I don't but, know if I'll I don't know if I sign on to that. Yeah, I it's, was. I think I'm, it's more cultural than religious. Is what you saw there? Maybe, maybe, maybe both, but. And maybe I'm not making a great argument. I'm just trying to throw something in the air to create good podcasting, and I'll, I'll accept the L. That's okay. That's also good podcasting yeah, the, when somebody the, accepts the L. The commenter, the commentators of NBC, um, lean. They said, "Oh, the choreographer, you know, leaned into, um, you know, French culture in in most of this, and part of that was a menage with trois, where two two gay guys go with a woman i would say i don't know they're whatever they're bisexual and they end up in a room and they slam the door that's a part of the opening ceremonies at the olympics which is supposed to be about peace and bringing countries together and, yeah, and competing saw. and bringing the <laughs> olympic spirit i'm like yes olympic spirit 
uh, transgender people and uh, menage a trois. Yes. I think they're just they're just sort of like putting it, setting the table for what's actually going on, which is condom sales skyrocket at the Olympic Games. Like there is a lot of fun happening. And I'm not condoning it necessarily, but I'm just saying what's actually happening, this is always what happens anyway. But yeah, it, they're, the pr- provocative nature, I mean, France is an artistic place, uh, laissez-faire, very much. You got to draw a line somewhere. I think the tweet that I read from some, some dad who was like, hey, thanks a lot, Olympics, for me now having to explain to my six-year-old what a menage a trois is. Yeah. That, that part was like, you can... Do you, you can think be it's... artistic, you can be creative, but y- you can also draw a line somewhere. I don't disagree, but do you think a six uh, yeah, six year old watched that and right. knew what was happening? If they just go right, in the room I, and shut the door, you understand. For all he knows, they're having chocolate milk together, right. which actually can work out well in that situation. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dave you, knows. No, you're right. Remember that time? Okay, I do remember that Zach. time. Zach, it was you're, amazing. You're right. A dad saying that he's just he's making your a child point. has no idea. Okay, you guys are thinking about it way too literally. Accurately, way too literally. Accurately, Andy, <laughs> too literally. But to you your, get you understand what he's saying. The dad yes. doesn't you know, need to explain I, I anything. Know, you I know. I know the point that he's trying to say, which is, hey, we're this is supposed to be an event that anyone of any age can try to watch. You put sexually explicit material in it. To a degree that's like above and beyond, which was super unnecessary. Yeah. And, and so, uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. And I, and by the way, you know what it made me think of immediately was, I don't know how many times, it feels like every single year it has something to do with when the NBA finals happen. They will always have a super gnarly, scary horror film being in the commercials. During you- the NBA Finals, and I'm like, I remember tweeting at the oh. NBA before me, like, "Hey NBA, thanks a lot. Now my kids won't be able to go to sleep tonight because <laughs> we tried to watch Kobe bring home the win." Yeah, and i i don't um, I don't disagree with you on that. It's it's like this is prime time. Like, where is the line? I, I get it. You can push the envelope. Like, what what is PG thirteen versus PG, and what is R? Like, there's I've seen hard PG thirteens that are like, I probably you know I wouldn't take my kids to that one. And I've sure. seen R rated movies where it's it's like my kids could watch that because it's good content. We can have a good conversation behind it. This and, one doesn't feel like it's hard for me to make a decision of whether or not this is okay. Yeah, and it's it's a good example of like you don't get to control the narrative of what's being put in your face. So either turn it off or learn how to talk to your kids in a way where like, hey, let's break this down. Do you see what just happened? Like especially 6-year-old's not really going to care. The guy's making a point. I get that. You know, 12, 14, whatever year olds like in that ballpark if you're a parent concerned about what they're seeing and what they're learning in school and whatnot, have the conversations. You that it's okay if they see something like you can have, talk about the context of it, and also you can talk about why it might be bad, and you can even talk about the contents where it, yeah, this is pushing the envelope. I'm not talking about this specific example. This might be pushing the envelope, but here's why this might be useful to think about. Um, I think communication is is the key if you're a parent concerned about this stuff communication trumps all because you're you're raising them they're eventually going to go and have to process this stuff whether it's the olympics or whether they're going to see stuff or they stumble upon a porn magazine in the woods like we did when we were kids it's communication with the kids is the thing that's uh maybe this gonna help is you through this where we uh this is where we disagree on parenting styles because i think that there is definitely ages where kids can are equipped and able to handle and process more intense things and uh, communication be damned. It, it, no matter how much I talk to them about that, you can mess up little kids by showing them things and having them be exposed to things at too young a, of an age. And so that's where I, uh, where I look at this. I don't know if anybody got messed up because of this, but like, a- unless they started unpacking it now, like imagine that that plants, uh, sexual nuances and ideas in their minds that they're like 
what if that now sends them down a path where they're like, okay, well, I, I was never going to consider exploring this. Now I'm going to start exploring this. Or it just feels disturbing. As In college, I watched the movie American History X as a junior in college. Do you guys remember that movie? Dude, I love American History X. Do you remember that one scene? I know all of American History X. Do you know the scene I'm talking about at the beginning, the reason he goes to jail? The What's going on? We've got some sounds. We've got some sounds oh happening. Ugh. It's a Joe Biden moment. The point that uh, the point that I'm wanting to make here is there's a graphic scene where he he kills somebody, and uh, and it's really graphic. And no joke, that stuck with me for two weeks, and it was haunting, and it was super oh, disturbing. Wow. Yeah, it was really disturbing, and uh, and different people are affected in different ways by Agree. visual types of uh, encounters and stuff. So. Is it good to talk to your kids about this stuff when they encounter it? Yeah. Um, our philosophy has been, I'm going to try to keep keep it from you as long as I can, knowing that I can't forever. But maybe by the time you start to encounter these things, you've matured to the point that you can handle this um, a, a little bit more. Yeah, I think if I have, I mean, in terms of like having conversations, I don't think, com I mean, entering conversations when I haven't had a question and I'm like, this is borderline may not have picked up they may not have picked up on this i'm not even going to enter that conversation um which which i'd like i mean i do it because i like that approach and if i ever get a question like hey, i didn't understand why were they doing that in the olympics i'm like okay maybe a little bit of conversation but i'm still not going to open the door on what the heck was going on um because that's that's not a it's not even appropriate well, in son, general, when a man loves a woman, loves a man, they often <laughs> will lie down together. So some I did not have some, sexual relations with so that one woman. of the comments we've gotten from person from a person that probably did not doesn't listen to our podcast regularly, but they stumbled across a short or whatever and they see us drinking, they see maybe some cuss words and stuff. Their and they comment pulled has been they got to pull their kid aside and talk to them about Christians drinking. Yeah, we're corrupting kids. So that line, that line is subjective. Yeah. What you think is inappropriate for your mind or your kid's mind right. is different than your mind, your kid's mind, and rinse and repeat. Do you think we're a podcast for six-year-olds? No, we're not. No. But we're no. available on YouTube. Not any six-year-old year any six-year-old can stumble upon so us. So it's porn. So what? Yeah, that's my point. Availability like, doesn't. What is what is the point of availability? So th that's why I'm not I'm not freaked out by this. Talk to your kids. Like if they see if this is a prime time thing and you see it, like I wouldn't have chosen to do that artistic direction. I'm not personally offended by it, but now I can talk to my kids about why why it might be controversial. Get their thoughts and communicate that. But literally, there's there's no. Even on primetime TV, as we see, our podcast is maybe PG-13, occasionally R if you're just using the language. But to somebody, it is like NC-17. So what, what, what is the call here for the Olympics? Like we're just pissed about it or we are going to boycott or like how far does it go? Um, I just think it's, I think it's laughable that people get so upset and angry about stuff that happens. They have no control over. It doesn't impact them at all. And yet they're flying off the handles online. Well, We're, it's kind of what's happening now. Like it, it's, it feels, well, let me, do, so Dave, can you put, do the picture in picture real quick? It fell asleep. It fell asleep. Turn on that. Burp, burp, burp. Nope. You can close that. <laughs> that is awesome because that fell asleep. This fell asleep. All right. Try it now. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Producer that wasn't Dave. your fault, Dave. I'm fired. Zach's fired. Hey, wait a second. Is that the Olympic opening ceremony right there? It is. They look like they're wearing dresses. Oh, except the middle person is, that's a guy. It's a no, Da Vinci movie. doesn't have the actual icon the halo behind. I can see John's right testicle. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's not that's not Judas. It feels like it would be a Judas move. <laughs> and he only had one. So this, are we still talking about this? Well, 
I'm just wondering. I this. Sorry, that was more snotty than I wanted it. To yeah, I thought you were going to go to how people no, are so think, angry and upset about everything. I think it's perfectly snotty. Uh, Do we accept? Well, I thought snotty. it kicked you, you into the that. next topic. Close that. Yeah. So, come on, man. You're you're right. You did, but all right. <laughs> Lost my train of thought. I threw you an 85 mile per hour fastball right down the pipe. Yeah, you should have. Throw, throw it again. You should have made it 60. Throw, throw I it can't on. believe people are getting so angry and upset about all of this. How could they be? Like, that's all people do is take stuff and be like, I'm so angry. I'm like, I thought don't you were kind of angry. Don't you have a family? <laughs> Just playing the Yeah, part. don't you have family to be angry at? Jeez. <laughs> Don't be angry at your family. <laughs> Go use your energy in a good way for their family. Uh, can't you just be angry at your family? Uh, so we won't remember this in two weeks, and then next year it'll be uh, the Olympics in LA, and we'll have wholesome goodness, and the spirit of competition will rule again. Somebody will take Beyonce's spot. So how rad would it be, though? I want to see someone do a, a AI mashup of that lady rugby player coming across and like hitting Dionysus on the table and just like, Whoa! yeah, that would be fun. Hey, so, give me one right in the neck. Like I'm running after you, Andy, I'm yeah. going to tackle you. Give me like a stiff arm right in the neck, not an elbow. Oh, Did she give an elbow. She could give elbows. She could, I think you could do anything in, in rugby. So you could do anything. So this is, I, I have a response that was shared by friend of the show, Art Greco, that it was from a pastor. I think it's a friend of his, a pastor that had some thoughts and maybe this will cl put the book in, or maybe it'll lead you guys to some questions, but I think it was a, a very interesting and measured Christian response to the outrage over this um, opening ceremony. I'm a past, this is Jacob Whitehead on Facebook and it's public. So I don't, I don't know where he's the pastor of, but Art Greco, who we love, shared this. This is Pastor Whitehead. I'm a pastor and I have something to say. Christians that get online and spew hate towards non believers anger, anger me much more than non believers spewing hate towards my religion. I have no idea what the table at the Olympics was supposed to represent as an official statement contradicts the larger opinion. But what I can say is that every single person at that table would have been invited to Jesus' table. No doubt. Jesus not only spent his time on earth with sinners, he invited them to the very table that everyone assumes the Olympic table represents. Matthew was a tax collector. Peter was about to deny him. Thomas was about to doubt his resurrection. Judas was about to dis betray him. Side note by me and all of them, or at least a few of them, were totally oblivious to his actual mission because they thought he was right. literally going to overthrow shit. Yep. Jesus ate with them anyway. Jesus was with sinners all the time. In fact, it's one of the reasons the church people hated him and wanted him dead. Please allow this to serve as a reminder that people who are not Christians are not our responsibility to regulate. Jesus gave us an example to follow of, of welcoming everyone and pointing them towards the love of Jesus Remember that God's kindness is meant to lead us to repentance, not shouting, not the shouting of his angry followers. This doesn't mean I condone any religion, especially my own, being mocked. In fact, it's wrong. But my heart doesn't hurt for what they are doing to Jesus. My heart hurts for people that are likely not in a loving relationship with their creator. Jesus doesn't need me to shout about sinners sinning. He wants me to shout about the hope and love they're missing out on. Before you share an angry post or shout at people that J Jesus died for, think for a while and ask yourself if he would do the same. To be honest, you already know the answer. He wouldn't. He didn't. He died for them just as much as he died for you. Angry shouting at people that don't know Jesus is in direct contradiction to the example he gave us on the cross. Westboro Baptist sandwich signs should anger you much more than this. Jesus flipped tables on people in the temple, not people outside of that. Remember that. Um, I thought that was very thoughtful and I might quibble with some of the details, but whether it's Da Vinci's last supper or a drag queen last supper, supper, these are, uh, 
artistic representations of an event that we don't have pictures of. And whether people want it or not, whether the drag queens want to be at Jesus' table or not, even if it was, assuming it was Jesus' table, which I don't think it was, but regardless, the, the point is the fact that everyone are welcome at Jesus' table. Like Paul even critiques people for, th there's evidence of people getting, getting drunk and there a hierarchy developing at the communion table because the people of higher status were drinking all the wine, eating all the food. And there was like a segregation happening because of the haves versus the have nots at the communion table that Paul was like hammering them against because yeah. you know, the point of the table is all are welcome. Um, the point of those big banquet tables was no, the upper class people got those things. The lower class people didn't. And so I think there's a little bit of a, a version of this here. So whatever the motives of the actors or the artist, it shouldn't take away from the fact that all are welcome at the table of Christ and the last supper wasn't a thing of like, Oh, do you have Jesus in your heart or not? If not, don't eat anything and don't drink anything. That wasn't the point. The point was, Hey, are we all together? Then all are welcome. And so if, if you're not, yeah. if you're not down with Jesus, then yeah, think about that. But if, if you are, the point wasn't like, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Because obviously the disciples had a literal personal relationship with Jesus and most of them had no idea what he was actually doing. Because Peter's like, hey, can I sit at your right hand when you come into your glory, i.e. overthrow the Roman government? Totally wrong. So whatever his personal relationship with Jesus, he totally missed the boat. And yet he was there and he was welcome. So I don't know how you do, I don't know if it's, it's not one for one, but it's worth chewing on before you start clutching pearls. Well, the visual is what I think threw people. I mean, obviously it's like, what is going on here? This is just a sign of the times and, you know, society going sideways even more so. And it's being, the Olympics. and it's being marketed to the people, you know, around the world. Um, but, this is just stream of thought. Recently, we watched Men in Black with Will Smith again this past week. And there's a moment in, and this is connected, there's a moment in there where Will Smith's kind of un, like understanding of how, like he, they go into a shooting area, a shooting gallery, and it's a bunch of aliens. And uh, he takes one shot at the very end, and it's shooting a, a, this little girl um right in the head and he's like uh why did you do that and he walks the person through it and it's like well this guy it's alien looking thing had a handkerchief in his hand and i could tell that he just had a cold and this guy he was just hanging out but this little girl with the astrophysicist book in her like she's eight years old there's something wrong there it was like the visual, like you can see what looks like crazy, but ultimately when it comes down to it, it's like, those are human beings. Yes, they're on display at the Olympics opening ceremony and it looks just wacky and it's going to create a bunch of publicity. But when it comes right down to it, it's like probably the hope in Jesus would be let's just say that that is the table and it and this whole conversation this whole um kerfuffle flips on its head and those people who maybe they're on board with all of that turns into them asking the question or having some conversation with a christian and they're like i i, I yeah i was a part of that and i would i think i would I want to be a part of this conversation in Christianity, even though, you know, I was a part of all of this craziness. It's like, it comes back to, can you see the good that could come from something so crazy as these opening ceremonies where everybody's just like, this is all a bunch of BS. Like, this is a fight against Jesus. It's a fight against God. This is atheist, atheism on display. Like, I, it might be. Uh, it, it could, could be. be. It could be. Uh, I don't, I agree with almost everything. I don't agree with you just, uh, 
flippantly comparing this and uh, Da Vinci's depiction. I think those are. I don't think it's the same thing, but I was trying. Well, you to... described them both as like creative representations of the of the thing in in the event that it was. I'm like, not no. That's the those are coming from two opposite sides of the spectrum. In the event that this is what that was, if this is if if it it's was, not just, it's if not they... just being creative. There yeah, are, the I motives, The motives are on opposite sides of the spectrum. So, and you're probably right. I just maybe I don't I don't care that much. Um, but regardless, apparently the DJ, the one that was doing the DJ, the one right. with the icon behind uh, her, was uh, is getting death threats and whatnot. Now, most of death threats online are going to be bots and people that will never do anything. But regardless, if like there's the ones we get, if there's a human, yeah, we've come close to death <laughs> threats. It's wild. Um, I mean, we're sending people to hell, so you know. You might want to kill us to avoid us sending people to hell. Also, Jesus has not forgiven us. Yeah, There's clearly. Too. Yeah. Okay, uh, but yes, I, I think we're all. But the idea of a of a, a human being saying like, like, how dare you make fun of Jesus? I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you know, that's just such a contradiction <laughs> in terms. Like, knock it off. People. I'm gonna kill you if you make fun of Jesus again. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but we're all outraged in our various ways. Uh, and so I do want to get to listener feedback because we got a we yeah. got a good one from Cam. Okay. But there's a there's a, some tasty nuggets in this article I found that I'll put in the show notes. Okay. And, and what what is happening? Why do we get outraged and why do we seem to like getting outraged? Just the royal we. All right. So this is about out- outrage and addiction. It says our brain produces dopamine and other chemicals that create a pleasure response. We enjoy these pleasant feelings, so we repeat the activities that produce them. We choose which behaviors get reinforced and which triggers the release of more reward chemicals. This happens when you scroll on your phone incessantly. The same phenomenon also explains why gambling is a habit, Jeff, with childhood baseball games, uh, that is so (laughs) difficult to break. Uh, Studies show that gambling produces a pattern of brain activity similar to cocaine in an addict. Rage is... (laughs) Did you look at... Wait, I couldn't tell. Did you look at Jeff or Dave? Same. (laughs) I got them both. <laughs> Nailed both of you guys. Rage is another harmful pattern that has a chemical reinforcement component. We talk about righteous indig- indignation to justify our outrage, but virtual, virtue signaling produces a vicious cycle that any of us can fall into. The more outraged we are at others, the more righteous we feel. That leads further down the rabbit hole where we experience moral superiority over others. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> I'm going to go to Mexico this and I'm going to build a house for people. Out- you, wait, <laughs> can I get some feedback? Outrage Sorry. at others. I don't wait, think what? That, I don't think that qualifies. <laughs> that, that seems okay. You're nah. making me do math that I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it does. I wasn't Outrage prepared at for. Other, at other people's failings allows us to feel vindicated from our own similar weaknesses. When we shout at them, it makes us feel pure. I am so much smarter and better than my enemies. They are so wrong. That's always am, true. And I am so right. Yeah, I said that's how it works. <laughs> Again, that pleasure response is activated and we will try to reinforce our way of thinking. Sanctimonious rage is so intense and pleasurable that we return to it again and again. In short, it becomes addictive. Do you want me to keep going? That's pretty good. I think that's that's good enough. Like what's... Something I knew, but reading that was the reminder, is literally the same systems of taking cocaine are being activated when you're outraged. I mean, now, that was hilarious, I know. (laughs) I know, Jeff. Sorry, wrong gullet. Uh, Yeah, gambling is the cocaine one. Yeah, No, but like dopamine... Or whatever the chemical that gets released, it's not the same as cocaine or the same level as gambling, but similar chemicals are being released in your body that cause you to literally. There's a reason we're literally addicted to outrage. I think on the preamble to our uh, pre-show <laughs> meeting, somebody said phones. Like was that you, Andy? You said oh phones. yeah, no, I said uh, the internet's responsible for internet. This. Yeah, yeah, and I think the internet has been a force multiplier because one of the things that she talks about in that article is the 
you're drawn to negativity and naturally drawn to negativity because your brain, the fight or flight response is designed to protect you from actual threats. And so even though with a lot of these things, like whatever it was, la- making fun, even if it was totally making fun of the last supper, that fight or flight response that gets activated prevents your brain from thinking logically. It deactivates your prefrontal cortex and you just enter like the fight or flight or freeze. Um, for me, it's mostly freeze, but uh, it's it's wild. And it's not just the Christians. Actually, the first people to complain apparently were the athletes. I think there was an African bishop and another bishop from France that complained about this. We won't go back into that, but it, a lot of the narrative about the outrage in America has been like, oh, just white Christian evangelicals are freaking out again. Well, let's zoom out because I think the this episode or this like event is less interesting and it, it represents a moment in time. Right. This, this topic is ongoing and we encounter it every single day. Yeah, the outrage. Algorithms are designed around this because they know that there are there's more engagement on uh, digital channels with things that you disagree with than there are with those that you agree with. If we just take ourselves as a case study and examine our comments, I would venture to guess 75% of our comments are negative. Yes. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you expect? I mean, that oh, in that ballpark, it doesn't. Yeah. The vast majority are, are negative. Yeah. People love fighting against whatever it is that people are throwing down. And, and when your phones allow you such immediate access to so much of this content... What ends up happening is there's, and I don't, I don't think she talks about it here in this article, but as you're continuing to zoom through this, uh, your the the um, the part of your brain that produces dopamine eventually will get maxed out, and it becomes numb. Just just kind of like doing anything too much becomes numb. So you need more of it. So you need more and more of it, and and it, there is literally like a a detox that you would have to go through. To get yourself back to normal dopamine levels, I am like this far away from going to dumb phone world. Like I'm, I'm serious. Like Nokia, like this is killing me. Like Nokia <laughs> phone, old and I can't school. Help it. Like yeah, very like <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm so close to it because uh, it. I, I catch myself not being great at being able to control that. Yeah, that filler. Now, now it's less. Maybe it's lesser about outrage. By the way, she's describing that outrage maybe helps you achieve a new level of dopamine hit. Like there's just a standard dopamine hit of like, um, oh, this is fun and interesting and, and, and I'll just go to, I'll flip to the next thing and I'm scrolling through Instagram. Whereas outrage is, is like a force multiplier on that effect for you. So Jeff, if you sat there and you scrolled through sports highlights, all positive, you'd love it. It'd be great. It would be triggering dopamine sure. in your brain. If you went and watched all Kamala Harris videos, it would trigger a different level of dopamine within your head, which is related to this outrage and addiction. What an idiot. Which is why you do cocaine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no. Thank you. Okay. I love that speech. That was, we're all getting to the point of this is actually an intervention for Jeff. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, on, so on, I'm going to set this on, down now. On outrage and addiction. <laughs> we're going to pray for you. Okay. Um, <laughs> This little bit, I mean, a lot joking here. Um, but to bring this back many, many decades, there was the J- Jerry Springer yeah. moment where you had small venue, uh, Jerry Springer running a, uh, what, what, was, that big, it, it was, what was that called? Sh- it was a, a talk, talk show. It was a talk show. And you just had, you had people that were there and then people that would come on and it would be craziness. And what we're experiencing now, but on a much bigger scale, because we all have phones and we have social media, but it'd be like, hey, who is, whose baby is this? And uh, Jerry Springer, for the, he's like, I couldn't believe that people wanted to actually share this. That ain't my baby. And then everybody wanted to watch it on television <laughs> because it's like, you're just waiting for the train crash. And then it would happen. And then be like, oh my gosh. But now moving forward 40 years, 
and we're here in 2024 and we all have phones and it's the religious or political views and things that are happening. It's nonstop. It hits you from every angle. It never ends. You can just keep the so- internet is forever. You can keep soaking it in and you can just fire back because now you're in the audience. You're in the Jerry Springer audience. Social media has brought you in and they grab your emotions and they're powerful. And you, uh, most of the time, most people just can't help themselves. And even if it was a small portion, it looks like the world well, has gone berserk. You are right, though. There is something to the fact Always. That, you, that it, uh, that, one of the little <laughs> things, the the things that you touched on though is is the audience size, right? And so while it was really constrained, like, like let's say back when you would watch one of those uh, talk shows, you get maybe you get riled up about it. Okay, well there's you and whoever's in your immediate vicinity, and maybe a couple other people that you talk to about it at work. Hey, did you see this last night? However, the ability to corroborate and like pile on with thousands, hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, you know, millions of people via the internet on this thing, uh, on this outrage, like again, becomes a force multiplier of, of what's going on. So really what I'm saying is we shouldn't have the internet. Yeah. Cause it's a thousand Jerry Springers every hour, every minute, every second. If you want it, you can get it. It's not good. But also I like car washing videos. So I've somehow got my algorithm. So Twitter, I see, I see death. I see yes. almost death videos on Twitter, or X. That's where I stop and I just start going. I subscribe and I watch forever and ever. And then a lot of politics. Instagram somehow, because I've shared and also received posts from my daughters. A lot of puppies. It's very good. The algorithms aren't. I think they can be geared towards the sinister. And our minds naturally will gravitate towards the negative and that will feed the algorithm. But you can curate these things. I get a lot of puppy videos on Instagram that are awesome and they lower my blood pressure. Instagram changes really quickly based on what you search on. This is an, in, this is an interesting podcast topic. Sorry. But regardless, <laughs> it's not like we're spewing a lot of fire and brimstone about the algorithm and it's like, no, you can curate it. Like you, you have agency over yourself. Yeah. Maybe Andy doesn't. He needs to get a flip phone. But you can. And if you can't, take a break. Turn it off. Get a dumb phone. Or limit yourself. Take it. Take agency over yourself. That's um, Each one of us, there is some part in our life where we struggle to have control over whatever the thing is. So for me right now, it's like, gosh, I need to, I need, I need to put blockers in my way. I'll turn flip my phone to grayscale mode, it becomes very disinteresting to use, right? Then, but whatever, the other one. thing could be if, if if gambling is your problem, producer Dave, or if drinking is your problem, Zach, or if, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, what is the latest one for you, Jeff? Cocaine. 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 If cocaine is the thing for you. <laughs> and gambling on child sports. I love watching Narcos. <laughs> While you're on cocaine. <laughs> if that, like, the, I think the point that you're trying to say is like, in a perfect world, we would all have the self-control to say no yeah. to those things. We don't quite have free will like we think we do. Sort of. We, we don't. We just don't have That's u- a- ultimate power all the time. We don't have that kind of will, ultimate willpower always. So there's, there's something that each of us is struggling with. Right. We have free will. No, but sort of. Not total power. Mm. We have free will. We can we can we can decide whenever we want to do whatever Jeff, we want. If you were born in Somalia, you would be a Muslim. You and you wouldn't have a choice about that. But now, I still have free will. I get to with, decide what within, I want to do every second free within that hunting. within that template. People will push back, but that doesn't mean I have free will. If I decide to do whatever I want and it goes against that religion or country or culture, there's going to be some pushback. But I still have the free will to do whatever I want. But you won't have the, you won't have like the, my freedoms might be shut down by other people, but I still have the free will to keep doing what I want to do or say. Okay. Well, this is ridiculous, but you can't fly. You can't decide to fly. So that, that level of free free will, that's just, yeah, that's just physics. Just on a dumb level. It is. It's, it's (laughs) like, no, I have the will to fly. 
I want. I would fly if I could. But you can't fly. Exactly. Stop. Unless you get so on I don't American have Airlines. Stop. That, that is silly. That brings us to our sponsor. <laughs> one one level <laughs> down. Delta Airlines. <laughs> one level below that, though, is like, where? What are you born into? You would. You were born into a situation that created a template for your life that affects every aspect of your life. But that's not negating you, free will. That's just a starting point. You can make you can make decisions within that and eventually you can go you can have some freedom but it's not as simple as like I can have some freedom I have I feel, free will I think I think you're conflating two things I don't think I am but I feel think free you're to con- tell I think me. you're conflating circumstance with free will We all we all experience the circumstances that we are either born into or experience on a daily basis Free will is so at some level, I have a decision on, on what I will do given my circumstance. I may not have control over my circumstances, but I can have control over my, over my reactions to those circumstances, right? Could, could you just decide to be attracted to men? You have that choice. Yeah, but I get Or do that. you have less of that choice no, because have... you were born with a certain pro- proclivity <laughs> that eliminates that choice? I, maybe eventually I could, I could get there. Okay, but I think you're kind of... Hey, you Andy. make... <laughs> Hold on. Dave. Hold on. Say that again, Dave. Uh, who are we talking about? Hey, Andy. Who's the guy? <laughs> Dave, your triceps. Producer Dave? Are, your triceps are looking good. <laughs> I'm going to have to fire you so that we don't have a situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's, that's a bigger conversation. Wait. I, wh- what? Wait. Wait. <laughs> I don't walk out of this. You, you, I think you you have the conviction that if you are born into a, a family or a society or a culture, that somehow free will changes. But free will, just by definition, is having the choice to decide what direction you're going to go. I'm not fighting against that at all. Okay. What are you fighting against? Why did you... Why did you keep pushing back and bringing out certain situations? So the the way that you fell in love with your wife, it's she's a woman. You're attracted to women, correct? I had the. Free I mean, feel free will. to come out of the closet. If I you had want. the free will to pursue her. No, but you. There's nothing about your nature that would. You you can't just you Jeff Pearson can't just say, I feel like going towards men. I feel like. Men are more attractive. That doesn't have to do with free will. That I doesn't think, have to do I with think disposition. Are, yeah, I think you're taking a really extended definition of free will. Yeah, like the actual ability to have free will and make choices. We're limited so you, by our dis, disposition like, is a thing. We're limited by what we're born into. We have a nature. There's also nurture. All the, I'm saying it's complicated. It's not one or the other. You, can, you, Jeff, have the ability, and Andy and Dave, sometimes myself... Wherever you're at, you have the ability to make choices to improve your life and to to counter things that are coming against you and to rise above certain things. I'm not arguing against any of that. I'm just saying it's limited by your personal culture that you're born into. That ha- plays a role too. I don't think culture has to do with choice. Like I'm so, like free will, making decisions to go left and right. Ultimately, there's this. You're making my argument because you're no. you, do, you didn't have a choice to come into the world. You're born and you're given a template. Yeah, but based on your parents. Yeah, but okay. So someone who's born in, there are many people that are born into the Muslim culture that are Christians today. Because I'm not they arguing made a against choice. that. Yeah, but that's because of free will. Is that more likely than not? Yeah, but you seem to have made the decision. Well, yeah, by free will, most people are sheep and follow the crowd where others are like, they've made a different decision, but still free will determined that. Like, that's what God gave us, free will to, you go right or left, you get to choose. And if you go right, then now you have these other choices. So by free will, you get to kind of determine the direction you're going. I mean, that is what free will is. It's different than this is your disposition. This is your your family, your place in life, and this is how it's going to be. It's like people can then go sideways, and those are the people you actually hear about the most are the people who went a different route from what they were born into because of free will. Do you think free will doesn't exist? Uh, free will is something that we tack on to what we're, we're given. Free will is a thing. Like, I'm an... 
I prefer the individualist politically. I'm directionally libertarian and anarchist. And I want my kids to, you can't control what the outside world does. I want you to be prepared to make the best decisions for you, recognizing the community you're a part of. And so I just think it's not, you don't have free will or you do, but if you were born in a certain culture, you wouldn't be like, literally you, none of us got asked to get brought into this world, but you were born in a specific culture if you were born in a different culture, you would be like them. And yeah, maybe you would end up being a, a, a Christian in the Western style of things. That that happens where people convert. But overall, I'm just saying it's it's complicated. Free will is complicated. There's that, that's nobody why I has think you're pure conflating, free will. That's why I think you're conflating circumstance with, with free will. I just think I have a good definition of free will. A better one than you guys. I don't know You're you, here because of free will. Your parents decided you to have sex. I don't know if you do though, because, uh, well, maybe let me ask this: uh, Does free will always mean uh, only have? To, does free will require that you have to be able to ha- take advantage of every single potential option ever on the table always? That sounds like that would be total free will. So if so, I, you guys have a limited definition of free will that basically includes the things I'm talking about, and you consider it free will. I think I'm just. I think we're arguing over definitions in a way that we're probably mostly in the same place, which but, is why I'm trying to understand where the definition is because I don't know if we are. I'm not convinced yet. I mean, free will allows there to be good and evil. Like we are given free will by our Creator, and we get to choose. Do am I going to go? the salvation route or am I going to walk away from God and say, forget all of this. And I'm going to be a part of that Olympic I, ceremony. I don't think humans are so creative that we, that, uh, that the majority of us all think about weighing every potential option at, at all times. And so that's a problem of progress. Like the more progress, like we're in a position where literally we can decide, Hey, do I want to move somewhere else because I don't like it here? That's a reality that 99% of the world doesn't have. Like you were born into a spot, you that's don't get a circumstance. Tr- yeah. That's your circumstance. So your free will is limited. Wait, I don't You guys are making my point and I don't, I don't under, know it. But so here's why that's dumb. Again, <laughs> be, because because then there all free will will always be limited because I I can't do magic, which is why we don't have which is total free will, which is why you need to like, at some point we have to exist. You're making an argument that nobody makes is the, the point that I'm trying to get to. Nobody makes the argument that unless I can do magic and fly, I don't have free will. No, I'm not going, I use that as a ridiculous example, but. <laughs> what Jeff? <laughs> Look up the you know, definition like, of free will like on your phone. At some point, we have to exist in. You were the only one that has access to a phone. In the Look it up. realm of the Pretty natural world. With sugar on yeah. Which limits our free will. You can leave us right here. No. 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 I'm sorry. Like, it's some, it, there has to be a, a line where we draw between reality and lack of reality. And I don't think th- that being forced to live in reality means that there is a limitation to free will. So I real uh, so I realize that so when I think of free will, it's like I have a choice to choose to follow Jesus or not. I have that free will, that's been given to me. Within the confines of a country, like there are, there are norms. Spanish Jesus. There are norms to follow. American Jesus. And and so within that, I had the free will to choose. So Dave, our pr- fantastic producer, uh, what is the definition of free will? The definition is free will. You can fly. You can do anything, kids. <laughs> free will is the idea that humans have the ability to make their own choices and determine their own fates, independent independent of any prior events or state of the universe. And that doesn't exist. I'm not arguing against an individual taking agency or suffering consequences for their own choices. I'm not arguing against that sort of thing. But Jeff. If you are born, if right now you're on the Gaza Strip and you're a 
toddler and you grow up to learn that everyone you know, um, you know, has been killed. Are you, do you have the free will to just not be affected by that? Wait, those are two no, different, they're no, connected. Those are two different things. They're connected. You will not... But I still get to make a choice. You're in Sudan. You're born into sex slavery. Literally, it says free will is before any events. Like any events that happen But we prior, don't have, have acts. We don't... That doesn't exist. Yeah, but that you're, can persuade you. The events you, of your life... That can persuade you. I'm not saying you can't be persuaded that people can't convert in and out of Christianity. But what I'm saying, if you're born into sex slavery in Sudan... You can't just choose to come to America or like, hey, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And so this is going on a long time. It's this maybe second I, part I, of the podcast. I honestly think fine. you do have that. You do have that free will to to literally break out of that fight back. However, it looks if you're if you're conniving enough to figure out a plan. Then why don't people do that? I think why some, are millions think some of people, people in are. sex slavery? Because as I said before, most of them are sheep and follow a certain, they just follow this and, and they give up. Yeah. Well, I, I'm but happy. But they still have free will this to decide. This is why I'm so, on the heretic couch. So free will, I think this is where it's coming in. You're conflating free will and total power. And that's, that's total power over all circumstances. And that's, that's, those are two different things. My example runs counter to the definition that Dave read. I acknowledge that. Like, but I, I think the examples I prove disprove that definition. Yes, individuals, I'm making choices because that I think are gonna help my my family thrive and help me thrive. Everyone has an ability within their circumstance, but they're limited by their circumstance. It doesn't mean mean they can't exceed that. It just means not every, it's not a blank slate where people are born, born or you're creating a video game character. It's like, no, I want to be that character. Now I want to be that character. That doesn't exist in the world. That's all I'm saying. You're affected by your culture, your circumstance, what you're born into, which limits your free will. It's not a blank slate with an open, open template. And um, I will leave it there. And you guys can do closing thoughts and let's do feedback. And this is maybe this is why I'm on the heretic couch. And you this guys, this is can... more interesting than the Dionysus stuff. Well, we did both. <laughs> we did both. You're welcome, the world. <laughs> you got a two for, you got two for one. Uh... Go ahead and comment and let me know how right I am. And if you don't, just yeah, you have the free will to answer Zach's question. So people like Sam Harris noted atheist um he doesn't think he thinks free will doesn't exist at all from what i understand i hope i'm not misrepresenting he gets to him. say that out of free will um but he brings up some of the points i bring up i don't go as far as that i just think people are limited by their what they're born into that is a limiting factor on their free will so, I think it's more I mean, of a challenge. That's more of a yes, challenge. And the natural world is a limiting factor on free will. And the fact that we don't we don't experience omnipotence is a limiting. I mean, they're technically yes. Thank you, Dave. I, they just come to my side. I think so. They agree. Thank no, you, Dave. No, I think the pan. I think the pandemic and the especially the first year of it was a perfect example of where people had free will. They could fight against it or not. And most people are like. Okay, what do I do? Yes, I'll go in my house and do nothing and put a mask on, take shots and kill myself in three years. But, you know, I will do that. So, and then there were the other people, like my family, who put up signs, told our kids, fight back, tell the teacher to screw off, fuck off. And we'll put up signs and tell teachers they're abusers and they mentally, emotionally, fit. they're just, they're bad people. And then you get calls from sheriffs, but that's the product of free will. And I love that. I think you're... You're making my argument because if you were born in the people's circumstances that still wear double masks in the car by themselves, you would be wearing a double mask in the car by yourself, or more likely to be. What because, are you talking about? Because you were born Maybe. in their circumstances, you received their information, you received different information, which is why you're the ma able so, to make the choices you're able to make. Yeah, but there's somebody in the com there in communist China many many years ago, a student who stood in front of a tank 
at a free will I and know. never to be seen again. But they had the free will to do that. I, I'm not arguing against that. There That's are, free will. There, there are incredible... Born into the Communist Party of China. There are incredible examples of nonconformist activity that are inspiring and, and unbelievably beautiful. Then nonconformity is how what human, free will is. That's not how, how humans are wired. In, in the heavens, They're wired like sheep. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the fact that they they've chosen the free will has they chosen because they fear. They don't know they're, they're worried. They don't they're know anxious. they're choosing. The woman the, the woman that in the Heaven's Gate cult where they took the the uh, Rite Aid, that's a store. It wasn't Kool-Aid, it was Powerade. It wasn't Powerade, that didn't exist. Whatever the aid is they took when they killed themselves Lime to aid. ascend to heaven. Limeade? Limeade. Okay. Thank you, producer Dave. I don't You're know unfired. if that's true, but <laughs> thank you. They there was one woman at the very end that's like, "What the fuck are we doing? Mm -hmm. This is stupid." But these are, we're just grabbing anecdotes. She, so like, what if I grab the? I, I know what your point is. You may that's no, but coming that, through. But so my dad went to college, and his and his siblings didn't. So within their template of circumstances, like yes, there's difference. I'm not arguing. I'm not saying everything is predetermined. No, no, no. But but the argument that you're based on your argument, you would say, "Hey, his circumstances determined where he's at." Because look at the rest of his family; no one's ever gone to college, and and he broke out of that. He's there are countless stories of people who've who've done that, who've been able to achieve and get themselves out, None of, of, which out of their circumstances. I'm not arguing against that, and I never have been. And I think I've mentioned that multiple times. You well, it's not either maybe, or. Maybe you're. Not saying it. The yeah, but you're saying right if you. Way. I'm not you're saying, saying if you were born to certain circumstances, yeah. you don't have free will because you were born into that's that. That's limiting. And so what I showed you was there are countless stories of those who are not limited by I've their circumstances. I fucking already acknowledged that multiple times. But you keep that coming back to it because I'm you just, just told that to Jeff. I'm just saying you can't just choose to be attracted to dudes. You're not wired that way. Rinse that's it. not about free will. I think definitionally it is. No, it's not. I get to make a decision. If I decide, if which if, just made my point. No, you get to make a decision. That's what free will is. So no, I, yeah. Are you now on both sides no, of the you're, argument? No, you're right. The, the problem is I'm. The, the problem is I'm addressing a complexity of life, whereas like you have Calvinists that think God determines everything. And they somehow try to massage it in a way that's like, yeah, you can still make decision. You have to make a decision for Christ, but ultimately God decides who's saved. I'm not that. And then you have the other people. You have the other side of the argument, which is like you have total, total free will. I'm just saying, it's more complicated than that. And uh, I love, I love this diversion. This has been. I realize you like to talk about the nuances of within whatever it might because be. Because there is nuances. Right. But when it comes to free will, free will is clear cut. Are you more... That doesn't exist. Are, are you, you more serious? likely... serious? Where were you born? If you were born in communist China, are you more likely to be stuck in communist China than become Jeff Pearson of today? Okay, more likely. Okay, becoming a conservative American Republican and, be, and sticking with the communist party that you've been born into... That's still because you have less free will than you think you do. <laughs> Your free will is Regardless, based on the template you're given. Okay, you don't have less free will. If you have any free will, you have free will to decide. If free will is a salad buffet, <laughs> wait—is this the old like? Maybe sense? now I'll understand it. If free will is a, it, here's how I think about it. If free will is a salad buffet. Um, I may go and choose five of the ten ingredients on at, at the at the buffet because they're the closest to me but there's a wall that cuts you off from the tomatoes will you go around it um i just may not be aware of the other seven ingredients that are on there it doesn't mean that had i have i if i peek around the corner and see that there's seven other ingredients that i couldn't have them it's just that i have it's the circumstances around me that i decided to choose these some people will choose to go around the corner and look at those other seven ingredients and take part in them. This is still all free will. I feel like you're teaching me like Kamala. I'm trying. I'm. I'm trying to use an analogy to to get us <laughs> for into a something. child. Well, <laughs> hey, hey, I want to know how mental illness no, keep, uh, works into this. Keep going. Keep going. 
Oh, Dave had something to say. Yeah, you have the free Shut will up. to be mentally ill. You have the free will to be fired. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make is is just because I don't uh, have choose to take part in or have awareness of all the potential options on the table does not mean that I am limited. The pot- if the potential exists, then it is not a limitation. Simply because I don't act on those or even become completely aware. None of us can be all can all be completely aware at any point in time of all the options on the table. But we could theoretically encounter any of them at any time. Right? Yeah. Which I guess. Which says that maybe the only limitation is that we can't be omniscient. Which is which is breaking the rules of reality, at least in my in my understanding of how reality works. And so the point is just because I don't take advantage of all the all the options that are on the table or even have knowledge or an awareness of all the options on the table does not mean that my free will is limited any more than I'm just a human and I can't do all the things all the time. I'm not a god. You're describing my position. You don't have access to all the options. Way to go, Andy. You you brought our vigorous conversation into an analytical thinking smart conversation. You don't have access to all the options. Hey, way to use your free will. But and that, even if you that, did... That you, should just be a, a given for if, anything, right? That's literally what I've been describing. <laughs> what? But no one... Why would anyone argue that we could be superheroes? I'm not arguing for that. I'm just... I know. So, so like, th- that's why I'm like, this is like a table stakes part of the conversation. We should all accept that we have to live and exist in reality and the constraints of and that. And I feel like you guys haven't been accepting that. Yeah, but you're talking about a place... <laughs> You're no. talking about a place in like everybody has their place in life and then they get to make decisions from there. I just, I just, You're saying yeah. this person, they're not going to even see that side of it. And the, Andy's point is that if just because you don't see it doesn't mean you don't have free will. You're still making free will in here. And you're like, well, you know, if you were born this way or, you know, you were uh, attracted to these people or you were born in this religion or this country, this culture, like you don't have free will. You do have free will because it's based off having, making your own personal choice. Which way will you go? I'll, A or B? I'll, I'll agree on the limitations as all humans have limitations. I'll agree on that. <laughs> like, Thank sure. you. Um, no, I mean, that's... Uh, so the, I, I'm just, do people have biases? That, that limit their ability to make logical decisions. Yeah, and can you learn and change? Yes, you can. Yeah. So, yeah. Can, so can biases be broken? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you have choice in the world. Yeah. Yes, you have free will. Okay, let's move. Let the let the listeners decide. <laughs> um, not can, that we're can we have the court reporter care. read can, all Cam, of that back? Cam and Dave Millsap and uh, I'm a bot. Three two six. Can you please weigh in? Next oh my week? God! <laughs> Do we have? Uh, you said you uh, alluded to Cam having a really good comment that was worth reading. Is it possible to track that down? Wait, who is it? Camelama Ding Dong. Camelon Ding Dong. Yeah, let's hear uh, Camelon Ding Dong's free will message. <laughs> Gosh! <laughs> God dang it! I don't. Are you signed in? Okay, when you have your iPad, you're not signed into the Bros account when you look at feedback, are you? I uh, don't know. Okay. <sighs> Producer Dave, could you hand me my iPad behind you on the lower left? <laughs> Producer Dave. Producer Dave. Thank you, sir. Oh. Don't worry. We'll long ed- arms we'll, of the law. We'll edit this out. Yeah, we will. <laughs> we'll always edit it out. Oh, cool. I bet it's not charged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not charged. No. Am I, am I fired? Bum, 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 bum. fired? This is the best. We're in the darkest timeline, you guys. We are in the darkest Price timeline. Price is right. This we're is, we're definitely yes. in the most interesting timeline. I don't. Oh, we got up to 400 subscribers on YouTube. We did? Boom. Yep. Hey, we had 400 subscribers. 400,000 subscribers. 400,000 subscribers. Here. You, okay. do, you do your which, thing. Which one do you want me to find? Which uh, episode? Um, it's one of the recent one. It might be the enemies. It might be the oh the the uh, the Trump one. Go uh, to the, go to the main episode. Uh, the assassination. Divine intervention. Got it. Okay. Comment. There's only four comments. Here we go. Cam Smith, not a bot. LOL. 
definitely shocked by some of the comments y'all have received regarding Robert Morris. It'd definitely be interesting to hear more about the David example. I can wrap my mind around it offhand that David was in a place of secular, non-religious leadership while he committed those heinous acts, and the Bible doesn't necessarily, from what I know, comment on the reinstitution of a secular leader in a secular role, whereas there are guidelines given in one of the Timothy letters for what constitutes a person being in a place of church leadership. Whoa, I hit read more. There's a lot more. Good. Go down here. Uh, sorry, uh, go down. I'll go, go down. quick. And if I remember my, I don't remember right. I don't know if the elders did anything wrong. What information were they given? The elders uh, for Robert Morse's uh, Gateway Church. Did they ask questions? Were they given false answers to the questions they asked? I feel like there's a lot of assumptions being made about the elders at Morris's church. True. Yes. The, that's how our show works. <laughs> uh, and they all assume the worst in the eldership. I don't know, man. I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, did he explain his past step down as due to an extramarital affair? Got a bunch of other questions. Blah, 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 blah. On another note. I'd probably still disagree with the deserved and earned distinction in one of your last videos too. And I'd probably still say that we don't deserve God's love um, with a smiley face. But that's because I think we, I think deserve is appealing to some objective slash absolute rule that I deserve X. Whereas we don't really deserve anything. Oh, let me pause there. Do you guys think we don't deserve anything? Like anything. You don't deserve anything. Well, that leads to the question that we have to earn technically, something. Technically, yes. I that deserves the wrong word. Well, I think, yeah. If, He's framing it as deserved. But most Christians do too. You don't deserve... Does your kid deserve your love? Does it matter if you're a good parent? Like, that's love what them? I mean. Deserve doesn't even end the conversation. That's kind of my point with God is like, if God cares about us personally, my current template of what God is, is like, whether I deserve it or not, no, I'm loved and accepted. Right. By what rule slash standard do I appeal to to say that I deserve X, but some person does not deserve X? Okay. Well, uh, LeBron James deserves to be in the NBA. I do not. That's true. That one seems pretty straightforward. Although, if you put the time in in your heyday, you you might come close. You might be D-leaguer. I had a dream. <laughs> I had a dream at one point in time. <laughs> and uh, then I realized it was not going to happen. As for the comment on God seeing something of, in us of value um, again I disagree I would say that we're we're not inherently of value God created garbage you guys uh, granted I think value is subjective and nothing inherently has nothing inherently has value I would tend to say that interesting us, that us as people value things that can improve us or life in some way either people can make us feel good feel heard slash understood technology that makes life easier etc whereas I don't think we can benefit God in any way. There is the concept of blessing God that is in the Bible. That sounds like a benefit to God. I'd appeal to- According to the, to the authors. Uh, this says, I'd appeal to the doctrine of God's, he uses a word here I've not seen, aseity, A-S, maybe he means deity. No, uh, A-S-E-I-T-Y? Like, uh, if you're asated, that's like, I don't know. A uh, doctrine of God's aseity and say that we cannot benefit God in any way. I'd say God saves us and loves us as a choice. Right. Yeah. As a choice. Because he, and he thinks there's value there. And as an extension of his nature, not because we bring anything to the table. Also love the Australian accent. Who did that? Did I do that? Probably not me. I'm, I suck. Who did the Australian accent? I don't know. I All right, Eddie. I can't choose to do a, an Australian accent. That's past the fish and chips. Eh? It, it, I can I can make you do it. If I could choose to do an Australian accent, I would, but I can't. I'm going to force you to do it. Are you ready? Outside of your Let's will. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. No, no, no. Here's okay. the we're gonna the word we're gonna say is weightlifting. Okay. But instead of the word weight, I want you to say the word white, like the color. Yeah. Do it. I see what you're doing, and I like it. White lifting. Boom. So I did Thank it. you. Now, he I, is Australian. It's the same way you can teach somebody to do uh, an Irish accent where you say yeah. whale, whale oil, oil, beef, hooked. But try to say white lifting as slow as you can and as enunciate as much as you can and try to make it not sound Australian. I, I believe white lifting. 
I agree. <laughs> you don't have free will. <laughs> I just forced him to be Australian. I just forced him to be Australian. But ask me to read that co- whole in comment an in an Australian <laughs> accent. I can't do it. No, no one. Actually, no one can. That's the thing. Yeah, there's <laughs> it's a lack of free will. Uh, I don't. I don't agree. I think that. I think that God. Uh, finds value in his creation, which is why he chooses, he wants to restore it. But I don't think he's arguing against God finding value. He did say that. No, he, we have no value. Yeah, we're only us, here because us, of our creator, so we have value. Correct. Thank you. And look at me being the peacemaker. Oh, I wanted you to pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 pop. Plug in the code, my friend. I, I, it's six nine six nine six nine six nine six nine six nine. <laughs> All right. Now, instead of nine, I want you to say noin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't, like, literally, I can't, there's another thing I, I can't, like, make a new God to please God and all that stuff, but I think that's what he's getting at. It's like, literally, there's nothing we can do for God that God couldn't do on God's own. And so, in that sense, I agree with him, but this is the beauty of this. I just appreciate this comment. It's great. It's thoughtful. And it's not a bot, obviously. He did say nothing has value. On it, on its own, no, no inherent. Yeah, I don't nothing know. Nothing inherently has value, maybe, so it gets attributed. Maybe, you, maybe think, you could make that argument ultimately, like in the grand scheme of things, when when the universe suffers an extreme heat death. Yeah, that's relativism. <clears throat> I mean, right. ultimately, I'm this, a relativist. Yeah, ultimately, this responder was born into you know. I'm trying a, to steal a life that. of. If Karen was his mom and you have no value so you have no value so that was what he was born into he doesn't have any free will so it's just he uh, says God saves slide. us and loves us as a choice I think that's true that, yeah, yeah. if that's of, the case you have value yeah I think that's part of the choice part of the that, that feeds into the choice which is why uh, which is which is why the the restoration of earth at the end is also an indication that God finds value in his creation beyond. If, if not, why restore something if you see no value in it? Yeah, we were created very Great. good and that hasn't changed. Some very gooder than others. That is the, I agree with that. Gooder. I agree with the, uh, that, that part of Genesis at least. Anyways, I'm a heretic. Can I read the one from Dave right after that? Yeah. Biblically speaking, God would have forced that girl to marry him for tapping dat or pay her dad for making her damaged goods. This is true. That is 100% biblical. Oh, talking about uh, Robert Morris? Yeah. because Now, apparently, okay, allegedly, they didn't have intercourse, but I don't know if the Bible distinguishes between object insertion and intercourse, but if you had sex with um a young lady like that they were married and if not you had to pay a severe penalty and so yeah dave's not wrong according to the old testament i think that's a uh, cultural um for- but it's biblical yes it is oh there he did have another comment on here which no, seems interesting no it is a good one that's yeah Can i, I wanted to this do one this too? yeah do it okay also uh, oh and he says hope you all are doing well cam we're doing as well as anybody is, but we don't have any choice. We're born into it. Also, would be interesting <laughs> to hear your thoughts on what allows chill theological conversations. Because I like those, but there's the thought in the back of my mind of hell. Uh, and I think that the fear of hell for the other person, which drives more persuasive kind of conversations, or conversations where I'm trying to persuade them. So Andy, it'd be interesting to hear what allows you to have more chill theological conversations with people of other backgrounds. Uh, here's what allows me to do that. My goal in the conversation is not to change somebody's mind. I I don't think that I'll convince someone to believe in Jesus simply by having a conversation. Because they don't have free will. (laughs) Exactly. Because they don't have free will. No, actually, that would be if I, that would be me then changing their minds. Them not having free will would be like, Sit down, let me tell you what you are. You're a Christian. You're sitting on both sides of the fence, Andy. Continue. Um, no, the point that I was trying to make is uh, it is one small piece of a much larger puzzle and the things that I think are more important than having one conversation on where we each believe in theology is 
is the summation of the rest of my relationship with that person. So if I have a really non-chill, intense theological conversation, explain to them the four spiritual laws and that they're gonna, they're a sinner who's destined for hell, um, and then act like a dick to them for the rest of the time that we're together, uh, how interested do you think they are going to be in that non-chill conversation? I use these as ways to open doors and um, surprise them when they find out later on that they became a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really it is like you earn the the trust. Like the guy holding the street sign on the corner telling people they're, they're going to hell forever is changing no minds. Or if he does, like how long does that last? It, and, it, until that emotion it, it goes away. You can't fear somebody into actually loving a thing. And so... I think the the bigger driver I was going for is that we like to think we're logical beings on average, and I try to be logical, and being logical is good. I'm not arguing against that. But oftentimes, we have an emotional drive, and we use logic to justify it. And so that's ultimately where I'm going with that three free will conversation is that we will use emotion to convince our sing- ourselves... or we we have an emotional belief about a thing, an emotional tie to it, and we will use reason to justify it and we'll think we were making a free choice. We when, can. When really sometimes. I'm not saying it's not sometimes, but I'm I'm saying on average, most of the time that's going on. And you can do it better. Once you're aware of the biases, you can do it better. You can learn how to make better choices. And ignore evidence that you want to believe, but it's just not true. I.e., like masks and all that stuff with via COVID, like that that sort of thing. Like, yes, you can change, you can improve yourself, but it's more like it is emotions. What are what drive us, and reason is what justifies our emotions. And you can read the Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. Or coddling of the American mind by Jonathan. I think it was Jonathan Haidt and somebody else. Anyways, very good books about why people do the the things they do. Yes, you have choice. You have agency. You can make better decisions. You can improve yourself. But there are limits. You can't fly. Improving yourself and making decisions are two different. And things. Dave, Dave, you mentioned the mental. We're not going to do this right now, but you did mention mental health somebody born into a physical disability, they can operate in a world where they can thrive the best that they can. But depending on the physical and or mental disability, it's going to limit them in a way that they can't make the decisions that we can make. That's capacity. It's all part of that conversation is is my, my point. So maybe we don't actually disagree and we just did that our it was fun though it was fun i was i think it was good pod it was very good pod i'm super excited (laughs) we can tell (laughs) it's bedtime for jeff but it was good good to hear from cam and uh, dave Millsap too and there were other people too um but regardless thoughtful responses awesome i love it this is one of my favorite things it's all of our one of our favorite things it's all of one of our favorite things about being on youtube is that we get a chance to get these interactions and so please keep the com the comments coming we love them and which is why you hear us responding to them every single week because it helps move the conversation forward and um and we appreciate that we appreciate you um we are Bros, Bibles, and Beer. If you've enjoyed what you've been seeing or hearing today, you can catch us on YouTube and or all of the uh, streaming platforms where you get your podcasts. Jeff is checking out. Um, we are also available on all the socials at Bros, Bibles, Beer. If you want to email us, Bros, Bible, Bros, Bibles, Beer at gmail.com. Yep. You can leave us a voicemail bro, at speakpipe.com slash Bros. Bros. We have that. That's a pretty that's pretty good that you got that one. Yeah. And that's a voicemail that we will just play on the air automatically. And we won't Correct. even listen. We'll we'll, we'll unedited unedited play on the air. And uh what else did I leave out? What did I leave? I think we're good. Did I nail all the things? Yeah. Just you nailed the thing. Gmail, all that stuff. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just do it. Keep commenting. If nothing, keep commenting and share it with one other friend. Like and subscribe and whatnot. Yes. Appreciate you guys. Let's end with some energy, boys. Grace, peace, peace. cheers. cheers.